Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, we are starting this night uh, with the topic project management components. The previous um, uh, class we had, we, we treated the introduction of um, uh, project management, the role of project management, and uh, we covered a lot. And now we are gradually stepping into the uh, project management uh, proper. Now uh, we're looking at the scope of project management. Project management, um, the components are structured. There are so many components, but we are going to look at the key components. The key components of the project management um, that we are going to be using as the scope management, stakeholder management, cost management, risk management, and change management. If you can master these components very well, then you are a very good uh, project manager. Let's look at the scoop management. First of all, what is scope? Scope management ensures that um, all processes and activities involved are well defined and the project And the project deliverables and outputs are achieved to a high standard. It's defined the success of the uh, project as well as the input and output needed to ensure success. So scope in project management means the area we need to cover in that project, the deliverables, the do's. And during scope management, we equally identify the don'ts. So the scope management has to, you need to look at the do's and the don'ts. What you need to do to achieve the project and what you don't need to, to do is equally uh, good to define what you don't need to do. These are the boundaries. You don't need to cross those boundaries. It's a no-go area for you to achieve your, your goals. If you need to uh, cross the boundary, there must be a good reason to do that. Now, let's look at the... Um, uh, scope management processes. Project management, project scope management includes the processes required to ensure that the projects include all the work required and only the work required to complete the project successfully. Managing the project scope is primarily concerned with the defining and controlling what is and is not included in the project, just like I've said before, what is, in the, what is included and what is not included. So you must define what is included and then define the boundaries. So that is the main thing. The processes, 
according to PMI, you need to plan your scope management. This one of the processes. Planning scope management include, uh, includes uh, creating a scope management plan that documents how the project and the scope will be defined, validated, and controlled. When you define this scope, you must the scope must be validated. Validated means that a senior officer, either a senior, if you are a junior project manager, a senior project manager, your line manager must validate it. It must be signed and uh, it must be approved and signed before you can start working with that uh, document as a, as a working document. And it has to be controlled. How you are going to control the, the, the scope is very important. You have to state how you are going to, you can't just say, uh, we, I will control it. There must be a, a, a documented plan on how we are going to um, control the scope. It's, it's going to be part of the, 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 the scope plan. Then after you must have uh, created your scope uh, management plan, the next thing is uh, you, you start collecting requirements. Requirements is uh, documenting, need to, to, to work with the stakeholders. You know, to, to, to know what the stakeholders need because they are the people driving the, the, the project. Because uh, requirement gathering it can be data collection, you can call it requirement gathering, but you need to collect the requirement, document it. You must work with your stakeholders to make sure you define this, to, uh, this uh, scope. Uh, it needs, they, at this point in time, uh, the stakeholders you must have a, a, a workshop with the stakeholders, a meeting with the stakeholders for you people to identify the scope. They are need they need to make their inputs. You need to understand what they are there. They have in mind the goals and the objectives. Then the next one is define the scope. The process of developing a detailed description of the projects and the product. That's why you define it a detailed description. What is the objective? What are you, everything has to be in detail. We call it um, low level, low level requirements. You have to, to go down in, <clears throat> in details to define the scope. When you have defined the scope very well, then the next thing is to creates a work breakdown structure. Work breakdown structure is that you need to start breaking the deliverables. What needs to be done to achieve the project? Need to be, you need to break it down into smaller uh, components, smaller manageable components. Maybe you can uh, break it down with uh, components you can manage within a week or within uh, two weeks depending on how you want to run your project, but it must be break down. So that within two weeks or within one week, I have to achieve this. Within one week that like, this our our session now is, you can see the way I break it down. That within two weeks, I will um, achieve project management. Another week, I will achieve uh, business analysis, analysis. And not, so that's how you break it down. That's called um, work break, breakdown structure. When you break it down, the next thing is to get it validated. You need to work with your alignment. Any step you take must be validated. At this point in time, after the work is being uh, broken down, your line manager needs to review what you've done and uh, approve it. And when it's approved, then that means that you've uh, started. You have to go into uh, project management uh, proper. That's where you have to start the controlling process. 
during this um, control, that's where you monitor the status of the projects and the product scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. <clears throat> so when you create a, a breakdown structure and it's been approved, you need to baseline it. Baseline, it means that this is a kind of benchmark. So if anything need to move, anything need to happen outside this baseline, then you must follow a due process to document it, to manage the change. A change can come at any time in project, but you must, you must have a plan to manage the changes. That's it's part of um, change management. So these are how the, 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 the process of managing project. When you manage your project uh, scope very well, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't deliver your project very well uh, on time and um, budget. But if you miss anything at this point in time, then it will come down haunting you along the line when you are managing the project. I equally uh, created this, uh, adopted this uh, project um, scope management map. You know, it gives you um, a, a visual uh, diagram. Looking at it, we will, will just help you know how to to just go down and manage your scope very well. In project management, modern project management and business analysis, you are going to be seeing a lot of map map like this diagram. You know, it speaks uh, uh, much, and uh, moreover, the management. You know, your management to be, be overseeing a lot of uh, things. So they don't, they don't have time to be uh, looking into uh, detailed uh, reports. So they prefer using diagram to, to illustrate your point so that once they look at it, they will see uh, what you are trying to, the message you are trying to convey. So in this diagram, you can see a uh, scope um, a plan scope management, that is a 5.1. You see all the things you need to do, your deliverables in order to, to plan your scope. It shows you the, the input, which is the project charter. I, I made a mention of project charter uh, during our introductory section. Then project management plan. Enterprise environmental factors, organizational process assets. Then you look at the tools and techniques which you, you need to employ. Then you look at the output. At the end of this process, you must come out with output. It's, it's, it's always the input and output. That's what the management is looking at. What are you? They always ask you, what do you need to do and what are you? getting out after the input and what are the techniques you need to, to, to employ to achieve this. That's how you manage projects. Those are the best practice in managing projects. After that, then you go into um, data collection. That is a collect requirement. I've stated this, um, uh, the inputs, the, the tools, and the output. You can see again in the input, the project charter is still there. You need to work with the, the project charter is, the, is, is an authority. A lot of things you need to do, you must work with project charter. Where you, because in project charter, it contains the, 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 the aims, the, the, it contains the problem, start from the problems. You need to identify your problem the aims of why are you trying to solve this problem? What are you trying to achieve solving this problem? What are you going to do in order to solve this problem? You know, 
what are the, 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 the requirement, the timeline, the budget, all these things are in project charter. So that's why in the, most of the, everything you do, you see project charter, project charter. You have to be referring to project anytime. It's an authority in project management. You need to work with it all the time. It becomes your guide. So after you collect the, um, the, the, the requirement, which is um, the input you have to come from the project charter, uh, project management plan, um, project uh, documents, business documents, agreements, enterprise environment, then the tools, which are the expert judgment, uh, data gathering, data analysis, decision making, uh, data representation, interpersonal team skill, um, context diagram, prototypes, and the output is going to be requirement documentation and the requirement traceability me metrics. These are the things you need to, 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 to get after requirement um, gathering. Then after requirement gathering, you go to um, scope definition. You can see the project charter is still there. It's part of the input. You still need to work with your project charter, uh, project uh, management plan, enterprise environment. These are the things you can't do without all these things. If after then you go to um, work breakdown structure. And work breakdown structure. There's I've said about you where you break everything down into smaller components, manageable components. You see project, uh, the input is a project uh, management plan, project document, enterprise environment factors, organizational uh, process assets. Um, you look at the tools and techniques you need to, to do this and the output. After then, you validate scope. To validate scope, you look at the input and the output, uh, the tools and the um, output and then after validation just like we said earlier you control the scope these are the a map gives you if you don't know anything in project management even if you are um, a gray horn you are just coming in with this kind of map you know what to do you already know what to do you don't need uh, if somebody just if come uh, just give you a, a, assign a project to you even if you are confused, just come to uh, this um, project scope management map, look at it. You've seen the, um, the map just give you a, a guide of what to do, itemized uh, in a diagram. I think you can see it you highly itemized so you know how to do it sequentially in order to achieve what you want to achieve. So that is a... Uh, um, uh, the scope uh, management process for you. I need to talk about um, a project charter because you see we'll be talking about project charter, project charter. It means that it's a very big document and I want you to see how this project charter looks at this point in time so you can guide us um, as we proceed. I'm going to show you um, a sample of a project charter. It's a very powerful document. It's very simple, but a very, a very, very powerful. Uh, the project charter, this is a project charter sample. You can use this to create your own project charter. Um, if you are creating, but most companies, they have their, their, their project charter template, which they will uh, give to you. So in project charter, the, the things uh, contains in project charter is uh, the project title. You must give the project the title, the project start date. The project must have a start date and end date. Just like when we are talking about uh, uh, features of a good uh, project management, talk, every project must have time limit. You can't uh, manage a project indefinitely. It doesn't happen. So you must have time and the end time. So if you are... Uh, from the project charter, it's meant to be foremost project 
after four months, which is contained in the project, so they must tell the management why this project is exceeding four months. It must have a reason, a valid reason. So like this, our project, we, we stated that it's going to be um, a four months program. And at the end of four months, and uh, we don't deliver, then I should be um, I had accountable. Why? Why am I not? Uh, why? Why is this uh, uh, course um, or program not delivered within the four months? And I must have a, a valid reason to defend myself. So, see the project manager must um, the name of the project manager and the sponsor who is sponsoring this project, the, who is the client. The sponsor must not only be the client, there's something I want to address. Uh, it must not be uh, uh, from outside the company. The sponsor can be even somebody from the organization. It can be internal process, internal process uh, improvement. So it mustn't be when you are working for a client because everybody is not going to work for, for consulting firm that are handling a lot of clients. Um, so uh, there's a lot of uh, internal improvement all the time within the organization. So the sponsor here might be a senior project manager or you know, somebody, even if not the project manager, but uh, is the sponsor. So it must be identified at the beginning. So it's the high, highly placed uh, stakeholder in the, in the project. Then business need. The business need is the problem. What are you trying to achieve? What is the, 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 the problem? What is the need? They have a need. That's why they are implementing this project. What is the business need? It must be clearly stated in the project chapter from day one that this is what we are trying to achieve. So yeah, if you are doing anything outside what is the, the state is their aim and objective, you're on your own. Then uh, project scope. You can see why pro, um, project charter is following project scope everywhere. You see, it's there. You have to ad, uh, identify project scope. Here you write the project scope. It might be in a very high level, um, status here, but everything here must be contained in the, in the, in the, in this project chat, all the school, you know, and the way it has to be contained in the project charter should be, um, to do and the what not to do. You must be stated what needs to be done. And you must state all the things that you don't need no go area. So it, it's, uh, you need to, to, to clearly state the boundary within the scope of the project. And after then, you need to look at the deliverables. When you state the scope, you look at the uh, deliverable. Within this scope, how do we deliver it? How do we break it down? What are we going to do? Where are we starting from? Because this scope contains a lot of requirements. So what are we going to, to, to do? How do we start? What comes first? You need to list all the deliverable here in the, in the, in the project charter. Then you look at the risk. Even before you start a project, you must have risks associated with projects based on historical data. Every project of God, there are, there are risks. For instance, if you are starting a, a motor company, everybody knows the risk of a motor company applying on the highway, accident, how do we stop this? These are the things. How do we select, how do we choose our drivers? You know, because drivers, if you, if you choose a, um, uh, a dr driver that are not qualified, that doesn't have a driving license, that's become funny. So these are the risks you need to identify, risks and issues. 
although you've not started, but it's, it's good to identify them. And then you prepare, that will help you to prepare a risk management plan waiting for them because they must surely come. Nobody, I, I've not seen any transport company that have not um, registered the accident before. But the way they manage their accident, um, their, their emergency response is what we are looking at. How they, they try their proactiveness in, um, in stopping accidents, like the, the, the kind of driver, you know, like so many of them, they have a manifest you, you, to, to, for the, all their, their passengers to, 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 to write their names, their address, their, the, these are the way you plan for, for risk management. So, and then you look at assumptions and dependencies. These are the things you still need to look at. So many of these projects or deliverables, they have a complementary projects they, they, they are working to. So you need to look what are their dependencies. You know? So these are the things, everything needs to be stated in the project charter. So that's why you can see how why project charter is a very powerful document. Because once you've done a very powerful project charter, you'll just be a happy project manager, you won't struggle. A lot of project managers will be sweating because uh, they didn't do their work very well, but if you've done their, very, their work very well, like me, whenever I start, um, I join any company, either as a business analyst or a project manager, the first thing I will want to know is, uh, yeah, do we have it? Even if, because at times you join a project that have already started. So what you need to know or do is uh, ask question, where is the project charter? Once you see the project charter, you know what they are doing what they are trying to achieve, where they are. And you will be able to, you know, blend in very well. So these are why I decided to bring Project Charter here because it speaks a lot of uh, um, authoritative language in uh, project management. So after everything, you must have a milestone. A milestone is that everything, all the deliverables, all of them need a timeline. You know, what are you going to do to reach a milestone? You know, if for instance, um, if you are, uh, I'm going to use Nigeria as an example, traveling from Lagos uh, by road to Abuja. I've done that before. A, 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 a milestone can be when you get to uh, uh, Lokoja. You see, most of them is a milestone. When you are traveling, you see some people, they just um, um, have somewhere to refresh, ease themselves, you know, relax a bit, and then they move on again. So it's like that in every project. When you reach a milestone, my stone. Here yeah, is it's time to celebrate with your team. At times, maybe on weekend, it takes your team. Uh, you guys go to a, a, a pub to have a, a cup of, um, uh, you know, drinks and, uh, you know, celebrate your mind. So it's, it's very important to celebrate your milestone because it's not easy. It's an achievement. In so when you reach a milestone in a project, you celebrate. So that's why it's important to itemize all your milestones. So the, the, the target completion date. You have target completion date and you have actual dates. Why is that? Because so many of times we plan to, to end the project at a particular time. <clears throat> but due to one circumstances, we'll find out that it's not possible. Maybe you're a team member, you might all of a sudden, you have um, a shortage of team members. Somebody might just drop. And you, somebody can just, just resign. He's not interested in, 
or got another job. It's going to affect your project. So in a situation like that, you find out that you don't have enough uh, uh, human resources uh, that will help you to, to, to complete that within the time expected. So, so you, but all these things need to be documented. When it's happening, you keep documenting them. So uh, you need to state your target um, date. So, and project charter is a continuous, keep on um, updating it as you work. So when um, you actually arrived at your des a destination, maybe finishing a, a milestone, then you, you come and um, um, update it with the actual uh, date it ended. So it's a continuous process. It's not like uh, you've created a, a project charter, you can keep it. You have to be using, you have to be working with it to finish the project. Then you look at the, the team members. The project team, you must, like the project team members that you are starting the project with, you must um, state them here. Every all of them, they must be, uh, they must come under the project charter. So these are people that will held uh, accountable for that project. Then approval and review committee. You see, like, like every step you take, it need to be reviewed and uh, approved by a sponsor. Is the project sponsor there? Is stated here, like uh, another division. Uh, business division head, uh, business unit head, finance manager, all these people, any steps you take, depending on their involvement in the project, they need to, um, I would call it validation. Approval, review, and result validation. When they review it, it means they have been validated. So that's how project charter is. And with this, I think, uh, you have an authoritative um, knowledge of uh, project charter. If you are starting a project today, I'm sure you are going to, to handle that project very well with this uh, description and explanation with this uh, uh, project charter. Another thing is that um, we need to look into is uh, um, prioritization because some of all these uh, your scope, you need to prioritize them. Like I said, deliverable, when you list, list del deliverables, how do you, which one are you going to start with? And um, which one are you not going to start? There is a way to do it so that you won't struggle. And the way to do it is um, through uh, scope prioritization using a Moscow analysis. Moscow analysis is a very powerful uh, project management uh, tool or technique that we use to prioritize not only our scope, even our requirement, everything, anything you are doing, you need to um, prioritize your activity in the order of uh, importance and you, you start working with them. And uh, it means uh, uh, M for this Moscow is a must. So under the uh, uh, must, you need to list all the things that need to be done, must be done. You list it under must. Then some that is um, should be done. All of us know that must and should is not the same thing. It should be done, but it's not like uh, uh, if it's not done, um, the project cannot uh, continue again you might find a way to navigate and move on with the project. So it must be done. So, and um, after then you look at um, uh, could, what are these, the things that could in it? It's not, a, it's, so everything is, Based on importance, could it, it, it could be it could be or it couldn't. So it's you can see that there is um, uh, is not a must, but the last one here is a 
wound. That's the, the, the boundary. You must state it. You must not have this. You must not, you know? So if you are uh, maybe um, a student of uh, so, so university, they say that as a student of this, you must not go this place. This is no go area. You out of bound. You know, in so many companies, even if you are working, there's areas they will just out of bound to customers or out of bound. So you, these are no go area. You don't while doing this project, don't do that. So that is it. So that's done. I will look at um, example of a, a, a scope, a project scope. So you look at how the scope looks. This is a, 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 an example I picked to, to just illustrate how it looks like. Because uh, it's good at seeing it. This is a um, human resources um, talent management system for um, ABC company. This is their scoop from um, this um, left hand to the right hand is the movement of things. From here is the hiring manager. The hiring manager needs to interact with the system in order to, to produce a deliverables towards the recruiting agency towards the job uh, seekers and the external world job website. So here the hiring manager, maybe here he will prepare, um, he, he want to recruit some people um, for the company. So all he needs to do is um, go to the um, company portal, prepare the, the jobs, uh, type the jobs, list the job, and then post the job on their website. And from their website, which is this um, internal user profile and external, this is the website, the portal, a kind of um, a portal or um, a dat a dat data management uh, um, a portal. So from here, that's where he, he does all his jobs. And then he posts the job in the website. And the recruiting agencies will come and so this company is recruiting. They'll start um, um, sourcing for, for, for competent um, uh, people to fill the vacancy. And equally, <clears throat> at times, so many of them do recruit directly. They don't go through recruit, recruitment agencies. So job seekers can apply to the job direct, di directly on their website. So in this scope, if you are, if you are asked to design um, an application or a website, for instance, like Udemy, um, I mean, uh, Upwork, I've uh, um, uh, um, employed you as a project manager to work with a business analyst to develop a website where uh, people can uh, be coming to look for jobs. This is a very good example of how you do that. You look at the requirements. How can a hiring manager post a job? Is a requirement. You know, internal associates, internal full time and part time contractors. You must make provisions for all of them. These are the requirements. Another requirement is how can the, the hiring manager um, interact with the website? It's very important. Where are they going to be typing the jobs? How where are they going to be listing the jobs? 
you need to make a provision where they are going to be listing the job on the website. And how are they going to be, you know, making sure that the uh, job seekers will have access to the job or see the job. And then that's why you come here. That's why if you come to a website, you can easily browse jobs and apply for jobs. And then they will be able to review the job and get back to you and uh, eventually hire you. So you can see all these things as scope. Recruiting agency is a scope, it's a requirement. It's a, it's a must have. Um, job seekers, you must have, they, they, you must, this um, project must have a, a job seeker uh, um, uh, page. A standard job uh, website you must have all these things. These are the things that um, uh, need to be done. That's the way the data, that is the data, the data flow, you know, from internal users to internal data flow to external users uh, to external data flow. That's the data flow. As a, if you are a business, it's the duty of a business analyst to design this. So these are one of the things business analysts do. You design something like this. And this will help the project manager to do his job as well. It's not the duty of project manager to design this. It's the duty of a business analyst. They design all these things. But as a, as a project manager, you need to work with them in order to, to understand what you'll be doing. The next thing we are going to look at is uh, the scoop creep. <clears throat> scope creep in project management refers to changes, continuous or uncontrolled growth in a project scope at any point after the project begins. This can occur when the project, when the scope of the project is not properly defined, documented, or controlled it is generally considered harmful. This is the major problem most business analysts and project managers are facing, scope, scope creep. Out of time, if you are given four months to do a, a, a project and you are doing the project in six months, that's scope creep. That's two, two months added is uh, scope creep. If you are meant to, to spend 5,000 pounds to deliver a software. And at the end of the day, you are demanding another 3,000 pounds. That 3,000 pounds is a, a scope creep. So because it's not in the original agreement. So that is scope creep. That's the definition of scope creep. And these things happen when um, the, 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 the scope is not well defined. Not well defined is that when you are planning it, you didn't understand it very well. You didn't know that it's going to happen this way. It's because you didn't understand the objectives. You didn't understand things very well. You need to understand, maybe you didn't consult the, 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 the sponsor very well. You assume that, um, this is what the sponsor wants. But maybe along the line, you find out that that's not what the sponsor so wants. And they, from what you find out that it's what the sponsor wants, it's costlier to do that. But at this point in time, you have already um, designed your, your project charter, which has been validated. So that is it. It's very important that it's well defined. So it's a very, it's one of the major harmful um, things or dangerous uh, problem we do a counter project management. And we should try as much as uh, possible to, to avoid it. Although it's very difficult to, to avoid, but what we do is uh, we plan to manage it. You make a provision for that. So 
to make a provision for for scope creep, uh, you, you during your budgeting, you must make plans for contingencies, you know, for sake of chances. Whereby if you are if you are if the the, the budget that's been approved for to develop that software is a ten thousand pounds, then if you are a good project manager, you need to have plan to use um, uh, five thousand. Try to work within five thousand at the initial stage, so that even if uh, um, the along the line you started the uh, same things things started unfolding. Maybe from that 5,000, you are, you are working to manage the project, you move to 6,000. You can see you are still within the range of the approval to 7,000. Maybe before the end of the project, you might just end up using the 10,000. Still, you are a good project manager because you made con a plan to, to, to accommodate uh, a kind of a buffer to accommodate all these things coming. So you must make a plan so because we are talking about scope creep because it do exist. If it, if it doesn't exist, there should be no reason why we are talking about it. And uh, the key uh, causes of scope creep, ambiguous or undefined scope definition. Lack of any formal scope or requirement management. Inconsistent pro process for collecting product requirements. Lack of sponsorship and stakeholder involvement. And the uh, project length. If the, the scope is uh, ambiguous, uh, it's very difficult. So you try as much as you can to make sure that your scope is uh, very simple. Don't use a um, big language or big uh, vocabulary. Just try to find a very simple vocabulary to define it, what you want to do. So that it will be everybody, even a layman will understand it. It's better uh, you use simple language, um, simple terms to define your scope than using big, big uh, uh, vocabularies. Lack of um, any formal scope or requirement management. The scope management must have a template, a plan. You can't just say, okay, uh, this is my, you must have a, val a validated plan. Company must have a plan. If company don't have a plan, try to initiate it. A, a, a scope, uh, the, the way you, you, you manage your scope requirement. Inconsistent process for collecting uh, product requirement. You must have a consistent way. Not today you use uh, uh, this uh, lean methodology. Uh, tomorrow you use uh, agile methodology. You must have a consistent plan. Or uh, there are so many. Ways, you have uh, so many ways to to collect. Like uh, you have a CPOC map. You have um, um, fishbone diagram. These are. Uh, techniques, they, they are, they are, all of them are solving problems, but they are coming from different angles. So not when you use this, you use this at times, you get confused. You don't even know uh, which, because at times they start conflicting. So you must have a way, a consistent way of doing things, managing your, 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 your project, your scope, you are collecting your requirement. Lack of sponsorship. And stakeholders, yes, stakeholders, they must involve. You must carry them along. You must have a plan on how to manage your, your stakeholders very well. And this uh, project length, like uh, what the, 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 if a, a project duration becomes so long, there is high chances of falling into scope. So projects should be uh, time bound, you know? Make uh, sure that your project is uh, have a, a starting date and a closing date, a duration. 
and work within that duration. With all that, it will help you to eliminate um, a scope a creep. Now, I itemized how to avoid scope creep here for you so that even later you can just come and uh, have a look and it will help you. So here is uh, how to avoid scope creep. Clear, well-managed scope is a key element to successful uh, projects. Scope statement should include both features in and out of scope. I've said all these things before, but let's just repeat it. Business analysts can contribute to clear scope with effective requirement elicitation. Requirement elicitation is requirement gathering, is data collection. Very soon, when you'll be doing business analysts, um, a course, all you'll be hearing is the requirement gathering, requirement elicitation, requirement analysis. These are what you'll be hearing till you finish the um, business analysis. So business analysis is very powerful. They are the midfielders. So a project manager should include a change management process in scope management plan. Just like I said before, you must have a plan, scope management plan. You've not uh, fallen into scope creep, you know, but you must have a plan on how to manage it, even how to make sure you don't fall, and even how to manage it when you fall into, into creep. Establish and follow required process for scope modeling. Like I said, using a consistent, you must have a model, scope modeling. A, 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 a model, you must have your own model that works for you. And we have a generally accepted model like a, a CPOC map. CPOC map is very, very powerful. It's a very powerful tool. What uh, CPOC means is uh, S is for, for supply, what need to be supplied, so it means suppliers. What input need to be brought in, you know? And the uh, input, process, output, and, and C is the, the, the customer. When you make an input, then what is the process to make that input? And how, what is the process from the input to become an output? And then how does the customer want it? This is the, um, what CPOC map is talking, it's a, it's a model. I just choose the model out of so many other models. There are so many other models like um, uh, fishbone diagram, uh, process mapping. So then analysis, you need to, it's still a, a, a model requirement uh, analysis prioritization, traceability uh, metrics, and changement. These are process model. You must have a standard model of uh, managing your scope. Then sponsors should develop a project charter to keep the ownership. So it's, it's advisable that the sponsors should be the people developing the project charter. It, 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 as a project manager, it's better for them to develop it and give it to you so that you know that actually this is what they want. You know, like you are asking them what they want. They're giving you what they want and you work with them. But if they want to work with you to develop it, then it's still very good. Use tools like RACI um, uh, metrics. RACI is a responsible, accountable, consulted, and the form is a metrics to manage rules and responsibilities uh, uh, in project. So with that, you should know who is responsible for doing this, who is accountable for this particular deliverable, who will be consulted, why 
um, trying to deliver this uh, deliverable? Who should be informed? Why trying to deliver this deliverable? It's very important um, tools and techniques. All of them will have their templates for you to be using because when you'll be doing your work experience, these are the tools you need to be working with. You need to work with all these tools for you to deliver quality project management. Educate sponsors to chunk projects into short sub uh, projects and uh, for and to focus on tight deliverables. When projects started, if you have um, uh, sponsors that are uh, many at times you meet sponsors that don't really know what they want. It's, it's a serious problem in a, in a project management. When the project have started, they will see them, they will still come and uh, they want to do this, they want you to add this, they want to. But since our, the project have already started, if you don't take time, they'll push into a uh, scope uh, creep. So there's a time they start adding, 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 and the project becomes too big. So when they come like that, or if they want you to deliver one project, one big project that is supposed to be a program, you educate them. The importance of creating projects, um, breaking them down into smaller, smaller sub-projects. Um, because some people will see a program as a project. Yes, they two different between a program and a project. When they come with a program and tell you that this is their project, you tell them this is a program, not a project. Educate them because you are an authority in project management. They should rely on your expertise to do um, their own jobs very well. And that's um, all we have for um, scope management. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you say something? Yes, sir, we can hear you. I can hear you, sir. Okay. It's just because I've seen so many people have left that maybe I'm seeing, is there any issue with the problem? Yes, sir, so many people are complaining on the group that they can't, um, they can't log in. So many people are complaining on the group that they can't log in. Why some mistakenly logged out and have been unable to log in? Okay. Well, at this point in time, I'm not going to be treating that um, uh, problem. Uh, what I'll do is that I will continue. And um, after that, we upload the video for them to watch. And then we'll look at why is that way and find someone that will be solving these problems, why this session is going on. Is that okay? Okay, sir. Alternatively, um, I, I didn't want to put it on the group without permission. Okay. Do you, um, they can actually log in directly from Zoom, like if they have the app, Zoom app, they can just um, log in, log into Zoom, then use the meeting ID and um, send the password, like for those that have the password, those that are registered. 
and got mail, they can just put in the password and then they would log in directly through Zoom. But I mm. didn't know if um, I should put it up on the group. It's another alternative. Yeah, the issue here is that uh, so many of them don't follow the, they don't read the instruction. It's very simple. All these things, I tried them out myself before I make sure that everything is working smoothly. So many of them, they don't uh, do any, they don't, they don't read the instructions. All they need is just uh, to, to, to follow the, the short route. It's good for us to know how to read instruction and follow it uh, very well. But we will look into that. Uh, that will not um, uh, stop us because we missed yesterday. So we need to move on. We need to achieve this within the time uh, frame. And uh, what I will do is um, I will continue to see how much um, I can cover and then I'll upload it and we'll keep on refining our process to get um, exactly what we want. Okay, sir. Yeah. All right, sir. Okay, I will move back to what we are doing. Um, we finished the scope management. So I think what we need to do now is the uh, uh, risk management. I will quickly go into that. So I'll see how much I, I can uh, cover. Okay, somebody raising hand, oh yeah. Good evening, you can, uh, yes, yeah, good, good evening. Okay, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear earlier, but I'm able to hear now. But I raised my hand earlier, but I'm fine now. Thank you. Okay, you can hear yes. now. Yes, properly. Thank you. Okay, everybody should just. Um, this is the second day of uh, this um, 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 tutorial training properly. So, We'll get there. Uh, lucky enough, we have a good portal where we can upload the, uh, the video, but it's good to participate. It's very good to, to participate in live session because why it's good is uh, you are learning and everybody's planning to start working remotely. So, and this is part of the remote job. You know, you might think uh, you can equally easily uh, go and uh, watch the video. When you go, when you remember after this uh, whole process is and you got a job in a company, and this is a meeting between you and your stakeholder as the project manager, and the, you, you just log out. So you must learn how to train yourself to be disciplined because we are talking about serious career. Project manager and business analyst, these are the people driving change in the organization. So you must learn to be principled, you must train yourself. If you are not ready for it, there is no way to try to drag yourself. You know, it's not easy to be a big guy. You must work hard to be a big guy. All the big guys we are seeing now, they work hard, you know, to, to, to do that. So the, it, all this thing, you are, you are learning to work remotely. It's part of remote work. That's what we are doing, it's part of the training is a technology that have come to stay. None of us uh, didn't know that it's going to, the time will come, our way of working will become uh, remote, but it's, it has come to stay. So I'll quickly go into um, risk management. Um, no, we will continue uh, stakeholder management, not risk management. So at this point, we we'll look into um, stakeholder management. Stakeholder management is the process of forming, managing, and uh, maintaining constructive relationship by ensuring uh, expectations have been achieved and end result meets quality expectation of the stakeholders 
or end users. Stakeholder management ensures that key stakeholders are kept satisfied throughout the project life cycle. Now, stakeholders are the, the key drivers of the project. They have something in mind. They have objectives. So you must carry them along as much as you can. And to carry them along, you must have a plan to carry them along. You must have a plan to manage them. So there is um, a lot of um, techniques which you can employ to manage stakeholders to make sure that you have a good relationship with them. So they are important, important elements in project management. You cannot do without them. So you must have to love, love them. You know, some of them can be difficult to manage, but there is are the politics in uh, project management. You must have to play that politics to manage them very well. So you look at the importance of uh, stakeholder management. Getting the opinion of the highly influential and powerful stakeholders will enable you to shape and define your project from the onset. Stakeholder buy-in can improve the quality of your project. Uh, you must know how to buy your, your stakeholders. You must know how to do what they want, what their objective. Stakeholders completely understand um, your objectives and benefits of uh, your project and can help improve uh, support. When they understand you very well, most of them are out there to help you. They want, they are, don't say why a stakeholder should uh, employ you to do a job for him and they would then want to frustrate you. So you find out because of this, you know that they really want to help you. So you have to find a way to work with them so that they can, people can work very well. Important stakeholder management will help identify key blockers in your project so you can uh, win them over. So these are the importance of uh, uh, effective uh, uh, stakeholder management. So let's look at some of the uh, processes. First, you need to identify your stakeholders. It's, it's a very important once you join a project or you're giving a project mandate or project brief, <clears throat> you need to look for your stakeholders. Develop a list of stakeholders when you, uh, you, you are looking for them. Have a list of them. Develop a list. Identify them. Uh, mutually. How each stakeholder um, is important to the project. Each stakeholder's expectation. Stakeholder requirements in the project categorized in terms of influence and power. What is their relationship to the company or the organization? So these are how you, you, you find them. When you, you find them, you find out their, their interests. Then you, you, you classify them according to their, their, their interests and their, their power. There's a tool to do that. What we call it a, a stakeholder a power grid. You have to, to, to classify stakeholders in, their, in the way they, are, they, are, they, are, they have power in the project. So many of them are very powerful. So many of them are not powerful. You need to carry everybody. You don't need to look down on anybody, but you must give attention to those uh, people that have high power and high interest in the project. There are some people that are spoilers in project. You need to watch out for those people as well because they might have high power and they don't have interest. So they can mess their project up without them feeling the impact. So you prioritize. In this case, 
rate and rank stakeholder in terms of the following power. Do they have enough power to halt or influence the project? Proximity. What is their involvement in the project? Urgency. How urgent is their project to them? Then communication, you must have a communication strategy, communication plan, how to engage them, engagement. You know, interpersonal skills, you must have these things, you must have a good uh, uh, personal relationship, PR, uh, good PR. You must be meeting with them, you must have a follow up, and you must keep them aware. So you, you prioritize all these things. These are how you, you, you manage them to, to achieve um, a good relationship with them. Because if having a good relationship with them will help you. Well, so let's look at um, stakeholder management checklist. You need to have a checklist. All these things are very important. What motivates the team? What information do they um, want or need? You need to write them down. Have it as a checklist. What is the best method of uh, communication? You know, I, I handled a project and uh, I was trying to, to schedule a meeting with the stakeholder and it didn't work. So the stakeholder, so I have to find out what works for this stakeholder. I find out that he's always busy. So you need to find out, you need to follow the stakeholder, find out it when he have chance. You don't need to wait for, for him to. So this kind of stakeholders, you must find a way to go and meet them, not them coming to meet you, or you just because you, you created a meeting plan and they, they, so you see they are, they are not responding. You must find a way to manage them. You must find a way to navigate some of these uh, difficult or dangerous situation. Who influences your project? You must know who have influence on your project. And these people are people you need to really work very close with. What is their current opinion of your work? You need to know how they are feeling about your work. Are they happy? or do they have negative impression about what you're doing? You need to know. So it will help you to manage your project. Are they happy with uh, the work you are doing? You need to know if they are happy or not. If they are not happy, why are they not happy? These are the, the, the questions you need to um, ask yourself. Then we look at stakeholder management tools. These are the tools that stakeholders need to um, you, as a project manager, you need to manage your stakeholder. You have a, a communication plan. Then you have a, a, a racing matrix. We have a, a power grid. And we have a stakeholder analysis document. We are going to look at these um, tools one by one. And starting by... Um, a racing matrix. This is an example, a sample of um, a racing matrix. This is how it's going to look. These are what you are going to be using to work, to, to manage your stakeholders and your team. What he's saying here eh, is that uh, we are talking about who is responsible and who is accountable, who should be consulted, and who should be informed. <clears throat> this is what RACI is. As you can see here, this is um, um, a deliverable. In this deliverable, we have customer complaint reduction. So here, we are trying to reduce customer, customer complaint. And uh, you look at here, who is responsible for this? You look at from responsible, 
in a orange color, you look at Harvey is responsible for this um, um, activity. And who is accountable? Who is accountable for this? Look at the accountable, you look here, you see Adams. Adam is um, uh, accountable and he's the, the sponsor. Then you say, who must be consulted? You need to consult some people. You look at the, the this um, black color, you look at C, uh, Peter should be consulted. So you must consult Peter Y trying to, to deliver this uh, deliverable. Zachariah must be consulted as well. And who should be informed while doing this? You see, Sarah must be informed. So that is how you, 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 you make sure that you don't overlook anything. So when you get to your stakeholders list, and this uh, maybe a, a, a team list, you plot everybody according to how you want them to fit in and uh, participate in that uh, role or activity. So that when you are trying to achieve that, you know whom you are meeting and when you are meeting the, per the, the person. That's the importance of uh, uh, racing matrix. You mm -hmm. can see how powerful it is, and how it can help you to, to manage you are your stakeholder, manage your team very well. Then the next thing we're looking at now is a, a stakeholder um, power grid. Power grid, as you can see here, is power. This is a high power, and this is low power. Downstairs is low, low power. And from high power, you look at understand, you look at engage, you look at consider, you look at monitor. These are how you are going to plot them. Like those who have high power, these are Adam, is a CFO, and these are procurement. These are high powerful people, you know, and they need to understand, you need to understand them. You know, you need to understand them very well. Then, um, Zachariah and the Sami, they are very powerful as well. And with the analysis, you need to engage them. They are, they, they, they are very powerful. And they seem to have um, high interest in the project. So these are people you need to work closely with, engage them. Then you see, um, here, the technicians, they don't have a high power here. They have low power. So you need to just monitor them, you know? They equally have a low interest in the, in the project. So you just monitor them. But supervisor, Sarah, and operator, they have high interest in this um, project because maybe they are the people that will be benefiting from this project, but they don't have um, uh, high power. They have high interest, but low power. So you need to consider them. You still need to, to let them know what they consider working with them because of their interest, high interest. So, but the people who have high power and high interest are these people in green, Zakaria and Sami. You need to to work with them closely. And the spoilers here are Adam, CFO, and procurement. They have high power, but they, they don't have interest. If they mess their project up, they don't, get, they don't give a damn. So these are the people, that's why they are in red. You need to monitor them, you need to understand them. You need to just uh, you know watch them closely. So that is a um, stakeholder uh, power matrix. So, and then there's other documents uh, when you are doing your stakeholder analysis. And some of these documents is um, um, stakeholder 
roles and their involvement. You need to, 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 to create this kind of um, worksheets where you plot stakeholders. From this, their name, their position, their role, their power, you must have analyzed the power. And then you keep them away. For those you need to keep away, keep them away. For those that are interested, yeah, for those that need support, supportive, this is how you classify them. You know, this is how the, the, the role and involvement worksheet uh, looks like. Uh, these are uh, used for, for, for stakeholder analysis. And then you come to involvement planning worksheet. You must have another plan how you involve your stakeholders. You must analyze all these things. You know, stakeholder management as your uh, stake, um, project manager's job is, is a bit technical, as you can see, but we are, we, we are, we are breaking it down for you to make sure that uh, you are not going to you are not going to struggle mainly as the project manager. So from here, involvement you, uh, involvement you see you put the project the, the stakeholders name here, um, uh, current situation, what are their current situation, their current involvement, you know, they are unaware, are they aware, are they interested, are they supportive? That is the current involvement. What the desired involvement? Okay, they have not been, for instance, they are unaware and you want them to be aware. So you move them from unaware to be aware here. So you need to make sure that they are, they are you want them to be aware. Or you don't want them, so these are the things. They are not, uh, what is their interest? They are, they are not interested. Or uh, these are the things. How do you move them from the current state to the desired state? So this is how you manage it. If you want them to be unaware, this is how you manage. If you want the, if they are being supportive or they're not being supportive, this is how you, you manage. You want them to, to be involved, you know, in the project in the projects. If they want more involvement, then in the disaster, that's how you work on how to for maybe you want them to be more aware. They, they've not been so much aware in the in the current, but in the future, one day. So this is how you manage them, and that's how it was. Then the next one is a communication sheet. You must create a communication plan. It's very, very important. You create a communication plan for your project. And communication action worksheet is the best way to do that. You look at the stakeholder, you look at the communication method. You must have studied the, 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 the stakeholder. Or is there a generally adopted method of communication that the company use? These are the things you need to find out. Then you follow it up. You must follow a, a proper way, uh, adopted communication method. Then you know who to communicate. How often do you communicate? Is it by phone? Is it, um, you know, how often is it? Um, on weekly, maybe at the end of the week, you present weekly reports. Or at the end of the, the, the week or every day, you call the person on phone. Or is it during an emergency, can you call on phone? Some people, you, you don't call them on phone, just send them email. And then feedback. Whenever you communicate with them, there's a feedback. You log the feedback. What did they say after the communication? It must be, these are things that must be um, log so that whenever there is a situation, you, you, this will just you look at the record and everybody will know how you'll be managing your project, the effort you've been putting. And that's how you'll be navigating, making sure that your project moves on smoothly. So that is um, stakeholder analysis and uh, I think with this, I uh, put a lot of uh, light on the on that. And if you follow these uh, principles and uh, the the way I've just stated, you are not going to struggle. Believe me. So uh, let's move to cost management. Cost management is very key. You cannot run away from cost management. 
you know, you must manage your cost as the project manager. Uh, but um, you mustn't be a, a, a chartered accountant in order to manage costs. You, so if you if you if you have basic uh, um, costing principle or, or knowledge or with uh, a very good uh, a tool or or template, then you will, should be able to manage your, um, your the project cost very well. Cost management helps project manager establish what the project uh, will cost and set in place control by which they can reduce the chance of the project going over the budget. So these are the, the importance of um, uh, cost management. And to do that, looking at this template, that's how you break your, your cost down. You know, so in, in most of some of the, the, the tools like um, Microsoft uh, project software, it gives you a good um, uh, grip on how to manage cost because it's incorporated in that software, how you allocate your cost and then track your cost, making sure if you are going after uh, plotting your cost, you baseline your cost and that, that will help you to, to manage your cost very well, but we will still come on how to, to use tools like uh, that uh, um, Microsoft project uh, uh, tools. So, but uh, here you can see how to, 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 to manage your cost. For instance, when you break your project down, look at uh, page, uh, project uh, work breakdown structure, uh, the task here, project task, then you look at uh, Dave Johnson, you assign Dave Johnson and the plan um, is to work from eight, eight hours a day on that project. So that is the plan. And at the end of the day, the actual cost is, um, um, the actual hour is still eight hours. And the hour is um, 30 hours, uh, $30 per hour. So that is what is going to cost um, for, for Dave Johnson to do this job every day. So then you're looking at a material unit uh, is a hundred unit and uh, five unit, uh, 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 $5 per unit. So then the fixed rate here is $50. Um, dollars. So you're looking at uh, the budget. At the end of the day, the budgeted amount for this, um, uh, this tax on daily basis is 300. And at the end of the, the day, you are spending um, $790. Uh, dollars. This is ridiculous. How, 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 how can you do that as a project manager? So look at here, the balance under and over. One is red showing that you have gone over, over the budget. So by $490, um, how can you do that as a project manager? The same deliverable, okay, this one, you are within the budget. That's why it's green. And this um, tax from uh, Melissa Shaw, you still go over the budget. At the end of the day, the subtotal is that you've gone over the budget by $890, um, which makes you a very horrible project manager. 
you know these are the, that's why this uh, the way you manage your course it has to be very transparent so if you are doing well you don't need anybody to tell you that you are doing well and you are struggling with the cost the project cost then if you know you are struggling then you must find a way to keep your project under control project bu uh, budget under control that's the importance of uh, uh, costing then process of uh, managing project costs estimates project costs cost estimation is the process that takes direct cost indirect cost and other factors into account and uh, calculate a budget that meets the financial uh, commitment necessary for a successful project. Accurate cost estimation can, um, can do the difference between a successful plan and a failed plan. Yeah, you need to, to do your estimate very well before you start uh, developing a, a budget. You must do estimate. Everyone do, uh, does, even if you are not doing a project, even if you want to go for a shopping, you, you need a rough estimate. You know, everybody does. So it's, estimation is very good. I do estimation. And after estimation, then develop a project budget, a proper project budget after the estimation. A project budget is the total project cost needed to uh, complete a project over a defined period of time is used to estimate what the cost of the project will be for every phase of the project. Project budgets include labor costs, material procurement costs, and operating costs. It can be reviewed throughout the project. This then after estimating, then you plan the and the develop um, a, a, a real budget that's going to be a working document for you to manage your project. Then the next thing is to develop a plan to track the budget. You know, you need to track it and make sure that you control, make sure you don't go above the budget. Use a template to track the cost. Start by collecting the label, how long each task will take, the hour rate of each team member, material and all units of measurement. These are very important. That's how you, you collect uh, 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 money, uh, develop, then track it. With that, um, you, you, you should uh, stand a good chance of uh, not uh, going above budget. So that's um, all we have about um, uh, cost management. Then, the next component we need to look into is uh, risk, risk management. Risk management is very important. If you can manage your project risk very well, then you should be able to, to navigate because these are the risks and you should be a proactive, you should be a proactive project manager in order to, to manage your risk very well. Project risk management is the process of identifying, analyzing, and the uh, responding to any risk that arises over the life cycle of a project to help the project remain on track and meet its goal. Risk management isn't only uh, a reactive uh, uh, process. It should be equally proactive. You, must, you mustn't just be uh, reacting when things are about to happen or when things have happened. A good project manager must have an eagle eye to spot things before it happens. You know, you must read the situation uh, around their project, uh, you know, to know when there is danger coming. And you must set a lot of uh, indicators that will show red when there is um, things about, so you'll be able to spot it and then move quickly to, to, to stop it or handle it. There's a uh, tools we use uh, in risk uh, management to, and uh, some of the tools, the popular one is RAID. RAID is where you, 
you, you, you, you manage your risk, assumption, issues, and dependencies. And you can see uh, in order to, to, to manage risk, when you identify risk and log the risk, you should be able to log the risk according to, you need to prioritize the risk. You can see this um, uh, temp, uh, template, this red log here, you have a green, which is low, the risk is low. You must um, uh, prioritize the risk according to the risk level. Is it low, is it uh, medium, is it high, or is it critical? So critical risk must be handled with uh, urgency and you must give it all the attention. High risk is equally dangerous. It needs to be um, uh, very swift as well. And medium risk, not that you ignore it, but um, you, you don't need to, to handle it the way you, high, uh, you manage a critical and, uh, and low risk are some of the risks. Yeah, yeah, you need to still address it. You take your time to know, uh, study it and uh, deal with it. These are how you, you manage risk. And uh, uh, equally managing risk, you need to look at the, the, the assumptions uh, and the issues. And uh, that's how you, you manage uh, risk um, uh, very well. There are uh, steps uh, identified uh, uh, in, in risk management, which are very key. The, the, the first step is to identify the risk. First thing towards um, resolving the risk is to identify the risk and register the risk. And then when you register the risk, you brainstorm with your team on how to, to manage the risk. Try to carry your team uh, along while managing um, your risk. Now, when you identify the risk and uh, uh, register the, the, uh, the risk, the next thing is to do the risk analysis. You know, you can analyze project risk to address the impact, such as avoiding the risk, owning the risk, reducing the um, your exposure, or minimize the impact or transferring the risk. So, so many companies prefer transferring the risk. When you transfer the risk, like uh, that's why that, that's why the, the insurance companies are there. To, to manage your risk for you. So it's a very uh, good way of managing risk because they are trained, they are specialists in, in managing risk. Then another thing is uh, when you um, have identified, you need to prioritize the risk, categorize the risk as high, medium, or low. Some risk require immediate attention, just like I showed in the red, in the red log. They are the risks that can derail your project. They are high risk. So you need to tackle them swiftly. Assign, or own, uh, assign an owner to the risk. When you identify risk, prioritize risk, then the next thing is assigning an owner. From your project team, you must spot who is a very good person to manage this risk based on their um, scale level and the expertise and assign the risk to the person. Then the person becomes the, the, the owner of that risk. That person should lead to resolve the risk. And there you respond to risk. For each major risk identified, you create a plan to mitigate the risk. Develop a risk strategy some preventive or contingency plan. Work with the risk owner to make sure that uh, the risk owner um, is using the plan created to implement or to resolve the risk. Then you monitor the risk. Whoever owns the risk will be responsible for uh, tracking the progress towards resolution, but you, we need to stay up to date to have an accurate picture 
of the project's overall progress to identify and uh, monitor new risk. Having regular risk meeting, uh, red meeting is a good uh, way of uh, monitoring risk. Like if you start a project, it's a very good uh, um, practice to have a regular red meeting at least once a week, or maybe uh, once a week is very good. So you help you to keep accurate because whenever you're having read, you're observing all the risk, which risk has been closed, which risk is been the, the level, the stage as the risk management. So you need to be looking at it. And whenever a risk is managed or uh, have been resolved, it is closed. If you go to red, which I'll provide uh, templates on how to, to manage red, you know how to, to open uh, and close a risk. I provided this picture to show um, how to um, analyze a risk in real time. So risk analysis are how to analyze the risk of your project. When analyze, examine methodically in details. Then why? Why analyze the risk? We analyze the risk to avoid something like litigation, to address a, a regulatory issue, either to comply with new uh, legislation or reduce exposure or minimize uh, the impact. That's why you analyze risk. Then, what are the insights? One, lack of uh, information, much information, maybe it's complex. Most industries have a uh, uh, best practice. And many companies have a uh, framework. Risk analysis um, done in the uh, extreme. These are some of the insights, like uh, many companies, they have a, a framework on how to, to, to manage their, their risk. And it's good to, 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 to follow some of these, um, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are aware of managing their risk. Uh, look at the risk, they, the way they have been doing it. It will help you. Then um, initiating um, in, in the, there is a process of um, equally analyzing risk within the pro uh, the, 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 the project. Uh, during the initiation stage, you equally look at it during planning stage, during the executive stage, during the monitoring stage, you must um, be monitoring uh, a risk within all these stages to make sure that uh, you control your risk very well. Is is what I'm trying to say that risk management is a continuous process. You just don't uh, do it once. You must monitor risk all the time. It's a continuous process. You mustn't be reactive. You must be proactive, and with that, and with all these uh, tools and templates, you should be able to have a good grasp on how to manage your risk very well. Now, um, the last um, component which we are going to deal uh, with is uh, change management. Change management is becoming very popular in project management because um, it's not just about um, um, identifying, um, uh, implementing a process. 
implementing a um, um, solving a problem uh, is one thing, but managing the change is another thing. So, and change can come in from in so many ways. Um, it can be to move a company from one place, uh, from one stage to another, uh, maybe new, uh, new technologies. Um, but after that, what happens? Or uh, within that change processes, what happens? What about the resistance? How do you make sure that everybody complies and everybody is happy? Change management is a structured approach for training individuals, teams, organization from a current state to a desired future state. So that is the main purpose of change. You need to prepare everybody, you know, both their mind frame, their skill set. We need to prepare them holistically to be able to allow this. Uh, uh, desired uh, uh, future states to take place. That's uh, uh, the importance of uh, uh, change management. Uh, let's look at the uh, change management processes. Identify what will change. What is it, what is going to change within the organization? Is it uh, process improvement? You guys trying to reduce um, waste? Uh, maybe. Uh, um, um, moving to the cloud from on-premise. Uh, these are some of the, what are the changes? So present a solid business case to gain buy-in. You must present a solid business uh, about the change. You make a, a, a strong business case. Business case uh, has been designed by the, the business analyst. So you must understand the, uh, the, the the, the business case, you need to work with the business analyst to understand the, 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 bus, the business case very well. Most of the time, you might be the person the business analyst might be reporting to. So, but there must be a solid case, a strong case. Create a roadmap on how to um, uh, manage this change. There must be a roadmap. Gather data to ev and, uh, uh, for evaluation. You must gather data for evaluation uh, during this uh, change management process. You need to understand uh, the, the requirements that's uh, needed. That's the importance of uh, uh, data gathering and uh, uh, analysis. And when that's been done, then the next thing is you need to communicate. Constant communication is very good. Communicate to all the stakeholders, all the people that are have stake within this team, both senior management and uh, junior management, and uh, even the, the 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 customers. Everybody that goes to it, there must be constant flow of uh, communication. Everybody must be carried along. Then we monitor and manage the risk. There should be risk. People there must be. People must um, uh, say no. People must try to resist. These, these are some of the risks involved. You need to, to, to know how to manage them, uh, you know, uh, sensitize them, let them know the importance of that change and uh, uh, try to buy them in. Then when after everything is done, the change has been done, uh, implemented, then celebrate the success which we are with every stakeholder, everybody involved, uh, you know, contributed in achieving that uh, change. And then continuously review and improve the, the process. When you must have finished your, your project, your, there's something you need to do, um, we call it a post-implementation review. That change must be maintained. You, you know, you must have a cost because it's a change. So that uh, people will not go back to their old ways of doing things, and uh, that is um, that is it. So that is all about change management, and that is what we have um, uh, for this night. 
and I think um, we have five minutes remaining officially, but I'm going to stop here for tonight. And next um, time, we're going to look at uh, project management techniques, um, which is a uh, work breakdown structure, critical path method, Gantt, Screw, and Kanban. So these are what we are going to look at next. But for tonight, um, we are stopping our change management. And uh, I want to appreciate everybody that um, have been following. I can see we still have, uh, we are still 34 in numbers that are patiently waiting. And uh, that's very good. Um, and for those, that are uh, having challenges logging in, uh, this um, video will be uploaded in the uh, course portal for you people to go and uh, look at it and uh, um, continue our learning. So that is it for tonight. We'll continue to to communicate, please keep checking your notice board. No, take this thing as a, you are a serious student. If you must um, uh, wake up all the night, make sure that at the end of the day, you're achieving something for yourself. So, and uh, I will, at this point, if anybody got something to, to say, I think it's time to, to do that. Hello, class. Hello, sir. Yeah, how are you? Hello, sir. No question. Yes. Okay. On my part, I don't have a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think um, oh, I, I need to leave you guys so you, you go. I noticed that we have a, a, a big man here in the house um, by name um, Collins Okobi. Uh, Collins, if you are there, please can you talk to the class? All right. Yeah. Um, I will stop recording now. <laughs>